And, you know, another thing that I think a lot of guys leave out is keep that ego in check. You know, what's best for your kid and your family? You know, just because somebody's insulting you or don't just try to avoid all confrontation because you're not going to be a good dad, you know, sitting in jail, whether you were justified in what you did or whether you weren't justified in what you did, you're still going to jail, you know, at least for a little bit. And your kid is going to witness things, you know what I mean? So, so just be able to, hate to say it, but be the bigger guy and be like, Hey, you know, I'm not here for a problem. I got a kid. I got, you know, my wife's here, you know, and just get the hell out of there. You know, if you have the chance, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of these, I think a lot of confrontations like that, uh, can be avoided, you know, especially nowadays with the, you know, everybody's, everybody seems to be triggered a little bit quicker than they were two years ago. So, um, I think that would be kind of my best advice as far as that. What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is American hero Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan is a former Navy SEAL and CIA contractor. He's an entrepreneur who founded Vigilance Elite back in 2015, and he is the host of the Sean Ryan podcast, the Sean Ryan show. It is an absolute banger. you got to check it out. The link to his show is down there in the description below. While you're down there, tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's jump into it right now with former Navy SEAL Sean Ryan on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father Sean Ryan. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, let's get it started right here. How many kids do you have? How old? I got one kid. He's a son. His name's Sonny. And he's four months almost to the day. So I'm new at this whole thing. Yeah, wow. Very cool. Still got the price tag on him. You guys uh, yeah. you guys one and done here or are you going for more? Uh, I wish we would have done this a lot sooner. I'm ready for more. <laughs> Well, I got four myself, so uh, it's a blessing every time, believe me. Uh, and, and if you could hear, Sean, please just take one minute to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Uh, well, I was a Navy SEAL. I did that for six years. And then I got out, uh, tried to become a firefighter. Wasn't really my cup of tea. So I went to CIA, did about nine years there with a little bit of a break doing some anti-piracy stuff. Um, decided to leave that. Then I started Vigilance Elite, which was a tactical training company teaching civilians and law enforcement, uh, you know, just weapons manipulation tactics, stuff like that. Then kind of got out of that realm and started the Sean Ryan Show, which is uh, one of the top military type podcasts out there. It's on YouTube and on Apple um, for, you know, podcast platform and after I left CIA, I met my wife, Katie, and we have been married for two years now, and we just had our first son, so four months ago. Wow, incredible, and thank you for your service, of course, Sean, and I honestly, I think we're so blessed as a nation, as a people, to have access to so many of you guys. You bring so much to the table, and there's so many, not just in the Navy SEAL community, but in the military community. Uh, that have been involved in, in training, whether it's training civilians, offering advice. It's just it, I think we're so blessed to have uh, so many guys like yourself to uh, benefit, you know, the civilians in this country. So uh, thank you for your service. And so four months into the game here so far, uh, how has the experience of becoming a dad kind of changed your perspective on life? It changed my perspective on everything. It really I'll tell you, it's just awesome. Um, you know, it's Everybody has always told me, you know, how your priorities are going to change and you're going to change the minute you become a dad. And and they were absolutely 100 percent right. I didn't really believe him that much before he was born. But man, right out of the womb, everything changed immediately. Whole perspective on life. And um, it's just been awesome. It's been awesome. And one of the cool things too, Sean, is about, you know, especially in a relationship, the relationship definitely changes and you see your partner, your wife in a much different life. What has it been like for you so far watching Katie, uh, your wife, Katie, become a mom? It's, it's been, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just so fulfilling to see, uh, her as a, as a great mother. And, um, you know, it's to see a whole new happiness in her face and, and, and and her develop you know as a mother and and she's just done a phenomenal job it's 
it's really amazing to see, you know, what kind of happiness a child will bring into his brought into our family. And, you know, and it's brought, you know, it's fair share of uh, struggles, too, that we weren't weren't really anticipating. But um, but those are I mean, I wouldn't change anything, Alex. You know, it's been there's a lot of things after after pregnancy that I was not expect, <laughs> that I was not <laughs> expecting. And uh, but looking back, it all makes perfect sense, especially if you're looking at nature. You know, they they have that word, you know, the mama bear for a reason and uh she's protective and it's just really cool you know to, to see yeah well said it, it is so much fun because you guys you know you and my wife and i are still doing it we're married 17 years with four kids and it's like we you know we have a, a 15 year old now two high schoolers and these are experiences we've never had before we're going through them together so we're learning and we're growing together and, and the whole experience really uh it gets better with every stage so uh, it's awesome to hear you talk about it like that. Now, you did mention, too, saying you wish you had started earlier. A lot of the, the frogmen I've had on the podcast here uh, became dads while they were in the teams. And I can only imagine uh, how much more difficult that that must be for them guys, because uh, it, obviously what you do at, at the top of the chain there, you have to be laser focused on what you're doing. So to have, uh, you know, children and stuff, I, I, I can never imagine how you guys balance that. When you were in the teams, was there a noticeable difference uh, between the guys that had kids uh, as opposed to the single young gun guys that were out there um, performing together? You know, there were, but I, to be honest with you, I, were, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have kids and I wasn't married at that time. So I wasn't really paying attention to those types of things. Looking back after you mentioned it, yeah, they were definitely more mature. They were uh, a little bit, they valued their time a lot more than, than the single guys did. But, um, and, and just going back, a little bit farther i i'm happy that i waited until i was non i wasn't deploying anymore to have a kid because i i couldn't uh i don't want to miss anything you know and and so you know the timing wound up being perfect but uh i did I, I'll, I'll say i didn't know what i was missing out on that's for damn sure yeah, I've definitely had guys, two team guys that have said that they're glad that they waited till they were done serving uh, uh, in in the teams before they had kids. I know I remember having Jocko Willink on the show and he had has four kids and I was asking him about, uh, you know, the transition of number of kids, which was the most challenging. And he's like, you'd have to ask my wife that because he was constantly deploying. it. so it's like that's another reason why I have so much respect for the men and women of the military to do this, because when I have to do an overnight shift at the job on the railroad, I'm like, oh, man, I feel like I'm missing out. And it's like, here's these guys that are completely in another uh, on another side of the planet and missing out on things with their kids. So it's just so hard to imagine being in that kind of uh, uh, situation altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And, and and we said there, you know, with the with the vigilance elite, I know you train a lot of these law enforcement guys and different stuff. But just for what kind of advice do you have for the regular um, civilian dad that's out there? I know now you got a, a four month old. You, you'll be right now. The, the cities in this country, uh, the crime rate has gone true to ceiling over the last year or two years. Uh, for a young dad that's out there walking on the street, could be especially in these big cities, could be a very nerve wracking thing because it's a, you know you're 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 new into the role, the whole bit. What kind of advice do you have to the young family dad that's out there that's, you know, walking through the street? How could he be more aware of his uh, situation or how could he avoid some kind of a catastrophe while he's out there with his family? I mean, just pay attention to the surroundings. You know, I've been, a lot of times people know when things are kind of stirring up and, and there'll be some notices or some word around town. I know around here, you know, we got a little a heads up before some things were you know, supposedly about to happen and just keep your ear to the ground, you know, keep, keep in touch with, with the, keep in touch and keep a tab on the community. And, and, you know, a lot of times you'll be able to pick up, you know, kind of what's going on in the community. A lot of these things, you know, like the crime and, and stuff that's always, almost always in certain areas, you know, and so a little more heads up in the areas that you think you need to be, um, keep your head out of the phone and, you know, another thing that I think a lot of guys leave out is keep that ego in check. You know, what's best for your kid and your family? You know, just because somebody's insulting you or don't just try to avoid all confrontation because you're not going to be a good dad, you know, sitting in jail, whether you were justified in what you did or whether you weren't justified in what you did. You're still going to jail, you know, at least for a little bit. And your kid is going to witness things. You know what I mean? So so just be able to hate to say it, but be the bigger guy and be like, Hey, you know, 
I'm not here for a problem. I got a kid. I got, you know, my wife's here, you know, and just get the hell out of there, you know, if you have the chance, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of these, I think a lot of confrontations like that uh, can be avoided, you know, especially nowadays with the, you know, everybody's, everybody seems to be triggered a little bit quicker than they were two years ago. So um, I think that would be kind of my best advice as far as that. Yeah, well said. Yeah, and there's no doubt about what you say there, too. People are ready to fly off the handle at the drop of a hat today, it seems. So, uh, and, and of course, obviously, the, the coronavirus thing has shaken up the world, the pandemic, the whole bit. Now, you had your first child during this whole thing. So what was that experience that did that? I know you don't have anything to compare it to, but uh, was there, were you able to go to all the appointments, be in the room with your wife while the baby was born? Did, did it restrict you and, and you're in the process whatsoever? What was that experience like? Uh, it wasn't too bad. You know, I didn't know I did not get to go to all the appointments. I did get to go and listen to the heartbeat. You know, I did get to go and watch the sonogram. Um, I got to go to all the important stuff and I didn't go to all the stuff where she would walk in for five minutes. And so it was kind of maybe, maybe I lucked out a little bit, there. <laughs> but, uh, but as far as the birth, you know, I didn't even have to wear a mask, you know? And so I probably, I don't know. I, I just, I wasn't following the guidelines. I wasn't going to meet my son with a mask on. And, uh, and, um, and so I went through the whole pregnancy, you know, the whole delivery. Uh, it was awesome, man. You know, I have no complaints and COVID, believe it or not, did not affect any of that. You know, the whole entire stay that we had at the hospital. So oh. I, we were really, really worried about that, you know, and, but we did our research. We found a hospital that was in a doctor that, you know, we did a lot of research before we just, you know, picked a place and uh, and it worked out. Awesome. Did, did you guys find out that you what you were having? Did you guys did you like sh blow a drone out of the sky and it was pink or blue or something like that? Or did you guys wait till the end to find out? Oh, no, we we were going to wait till the end. But uh, we're way we're too big of planners to wait for the <laughs> surprise. So we had to know what to do with the nursery and clothes and all that kind of stuff. So we. As soon as we could find out, we we did. All right. And, and what would you consider to be, Sean, the uh, the top values that you hope to instill in Sonny growing up? Honesty, integrity, kindness. Uh, those are the, off the top of my head. Those are those are the, the probably the top ones. I like you know I want to teach them to root for the underdog too. I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. And, what about as far as the bedtime routine yet? You got them into a routine uh, of sleeping yet? Is it still a little wild four months into this? You reading them books? Are you singing them lullabies? How's the bedtime routine working so far? It's uh, constantly changing. We're trying to figure <laughs> it out still. <laughs> but uh, usually it goes, uh, we feed him, then we bathe him, then we change him, uh, you know, into his, his nighttime stuff, read him a story, and, and I don't rock him. I like to hold him and kind of move around with him. I put him in his crib when he's right when he starts rubbing his little eyes, you know, right before he goes to sleep. And then I just sit over the crib and, and watch him go to sleep uh, every night. And we, we moved him into his room at eight weeks. So I, I guess that's a little earlier than most people do it. But we're ready to get some privacy. Back, so. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, you'll yeah. benefit from that for sure. Yeah. And, and now you got the Sean Ryan show, the podcast going there. What was the genesis of that? And what is it like for you um, as a former team guy to interview other frogmen? Is that how has that experience been for you? And what was the whole genesis of the show? It's been awesome. Uh, the show kind of started, believe it or not, it was I w I'm not going to say it was an accident. I didn't expect it to grow into what it is by any means. Um, but, you know, I just separating from the SEAL teams and CIA and not really know where I fit in here. You know, I, I know how hard just through my own experience, how hard it is to kind of uh, get back in as a civilian and, and get into the community and build a business and overcome, you know, a lot of the uh, past trauma, mental trauma, uh, physical trauma for, for guys that are getting out. And it turns out the show just happened to, really help guys out with with getting their business lifted off the ground and, and getting the exposure that they need to become successful. And that's been uh, a real honor to be able to do that. When I'm interviewing these guys, you know, it gets it gets real heavy. Um, I get 
a lot more out of them than most people do. It gets emotional. We've had a lot of people break down on the show and it brings up a lot of past events uh, for myself. And that, you know, that can be tough. It can be, it can be tough to do, to hear these things over and over again, different experiences and, and, and a lot of them relate, I can relate to. And so, uh, but it is, it's an honor to be able to do it. And it's just, it's just the show we're on our, but 18th episode and it's just growing uh at a at, at a tremendously fast pace and um and uh, we're gonna keep doing it we're broadening a little bit we're getting i'm not gonna say we're getting out of uh military former special operations guys but what we are doing is we're broadening the spectrum we just had a congress uh a candidate for congress on last we got a lot of uh uh, cartel experts and some reporters and stuff. I'm getting ready to head down to Mexico and do some uh, cartel stuff in person. Uh, kind of bring in bring in some some real information uh, to to people, you know, on what they're doing down there. And and uh, and so we're just keep broadening, broadening, broadening. And and uh, but the military stuff and 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 bringing people exposure that don't normally get that kind of exposure is 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 kind of the bread and butter of the show and kind of the why of what we do in it, why we're doing it. And, and, and yeah, so we're just going to continue on. Yeah. And going back to what I said at the top there, I think we're so blessed as civilians to get a chance to hear podcasts like yours uh, because we, we actually get a little peek into the window of the emotional uh, involvement of what you guys go through more, more so than we'll get from seeing a Hollywood movie about seals or a show about seals. We actually get, uh, to listen in on these conversations. And I think it's so beneficial to so many people and it gives us a, a much better uh, respect for what it is that these guys do. So I, I, I love that you have the Sean Ryan show. Uh, now, listen, I, I've asked a few frogmen here that I've had on and I'll ask you, they, a few of them said, no, no. And then they turned out, yes. Do you have any kind of political aspirations? I know you mentioned there, you interviewed a congressman, you get involved with going on with down in the cartel. Do you have any kind of political aspirations of yourself throwing your hat in that political uh, toxic uh, swamp that's out there? <laughs> um right now no it has, it's crossed my mind i'm not gonna lie but you know i looking at what these guys go through and in the, in the the slander and the sliminess of politics i don't think that's really what's best for my family and um and right now i i you know my main goal is just concentrate on being the best father i can be and going into politics right off the bat with a four-month-old probably isn't going to be uh in favor of being the best father i can be so i'm gonna hold out for a while but uh you know if things don't start getting better then uh you know i might explore that a little a little more deeper a little well, we deeper. definitely we, we definitely need the leadership that's for sure I, and i'm so uh I'm so glad to see uh, quite a few uh navy seals getting involved other uh military guys getting involved because we definitely need something to change there and i know just from doing this show when I brought, bring, bring congressmen on here, like I've had Jim Jordan or whoever it may be, I, I get absolutely destroyed on, on Twitter and social media for doing that. I, even though we don't talk politics, uh, people just fly off the handle with stuff like that. So it's definitely an ugly scene all around. What other kind of um, goals or plans do you have for yourself business-wise? I know growing the podcast, what, you got any other kind of goals or plans for the new year here? Well, yeah, I actually I do. They're probably a lot different than what you're usually hearing, but I'm just one. I just want to find a good balance between business and being a dad and a good husband. And uh, that's really important to me. I have a lot of uh, colleagues and people that uh, maybe even friends, you know, that they, they have a tough time with that balance. And a lot of times I see guys move more towards the business and that that's the most important thing for them. For me, Business is great. Exposure is great. Interviews are great. Nothing is uh, more important to me than my family, my wife and my son, though. And so uh, if that means pumping the brakes on business, then I got to pump the brakes on business. You know, um, I, I got to get this this father thing down first and uh, business is second. So um, for me, my big goal this year is to is just to have fun. And find that balance in between business and being a father and a good husband. If I can accomplish that, then it's been a hell of a good year. Yeah, right on with that, Sean. And the, and the last thing I want to hit you with here, I know you're new into the game here, but I'd love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for those other new dads out there or for those about to be fathers who are listening? Be in the moment the best you can. You know, everybody always says, 
you know, it flies by, you know, they grow so fast and, and they're right. You know, even though it's only been four months, when I look at pictures of, of how big my son was, you know, on day one, the day he was born versus now at four months, it's crazy. You know, it is, it's insane. And if you're not in the moment, then you're missing out on a lot of stuff, a lot of important stuff. So um, I would say that would be my best advice. My most important advice would, would be to be in the moment. Yeah, very well said. Love the message. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Sean Ryan, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Thank you, Alex. Best of luck to you.